Good afternoon. It's Monday the 31st of October, a Halloween special. Thought I'd give you a close up. That's the spooky bit, the Halloween bit. Don't need a mask. So I'm gonna verticut this lawn. We're gonna see how good it is at picking up the leaves. Don't think we'll have too much of an issue on this lawn. But on this lawn over here, there's quite a few. Let's give you a closer look up. And you can see there's quite a few there. It's coming from the, uh, the willow just up there. So, reason I want to go with the vertical too is because I don't want to put too many machines on this now because at this bottom end down here where it's been raining the water holds against the kerb so if I go on there three or four times with different machines we're going to end up doing damage so I want to give the vertical and attachment a chance so let's go and get it out and let's start because they're going to pick up themselves so why do I want a vertical just because it's getting a little bit thick and I just want to thin it out a little bit to keep the air going through a few worms cast knocking about still coming so I'll get the blower out and blow those off first in the main we're looking all right but yeah I'll give it a vertical and that'll help thin it out and keep us going into the winter and in a few weeks we'll get some more punch on bit of a disease outbreak it seems just over here bit of fusarium perhaps can't be out this time of year we've been so much rain and so warm just perfect conditions this side I don't know because I've not really been over, but big Mr. Whippy worm casts, which we want to get rid of. Say a bit of fusarium damage there, but not took off too bad. This area does stuff because this doesn't get the sun at all now, so and it's covered in leaves. But I can't keep them off every day, so we're going to get the disease kicking in. Not as many worm casts this side. A few there, a few there. Quite a big one there. It's funny because I thought they were slowing down, but they've come back with a vengeance. So I'll get my blower out, like I said, give this side a good blow as well. Because all they're going to do is get squashed by the front roller of the vertical cutter. So you can see a bit more disease there. This side, because this doesn't see the sun whatsoever, quite a bit of disease on this side. But we knew that would happen because it happened last year. And it just shows once the sun goes, no matter what we do, we struggle to keep it going. But it's looking better than it did last year, let me tell you. So let's crack on. Okay. Okay, so we've put the vertical in attachment in. Those of you who are new to the channel or never seen a vertical in attachment before, this is it. There's 12 vertical blades, hence why it's called a vertical cutter, and these spin round, not ultra fast, but fast enough that we're just going to slice through any side growth to create a pathway to some air to get through, get rid of the old growth so we can promote some new stuff and then fertilizer can get through quicker, water can get through and generally just keep the surface a lot healthier. But what we're doing today is we're going to test it out and see how good it is at picking up the leaves. So let's get to it. So we've just done five or six passes on that side. The other side's come up really well. We've not got much left on there. Just probably not as good as the scarifying attachment because that's got total coverage across the whole cassette with the little prongs, even though there's gaps, there's some behind all staggered so you're getting 100% pickup. Whereas on here, we're not. So let me just show you what we've picked up so far. It's still done a job and we're verticutting as well so what i'll have to do is after we'll have to go on instead of with the cylinder we'll have to go on with the hater and pick the leaves up that, that we haven't got which is fine because i've been cutting with the hater anyway but today i did just want to go on with the cylinder as well but if we go on with the hater and then the cylinder that's three passes and i don't really want to do three passes today so what we'll do is we'll just do two passes today and then we'll call that job done but yeah, really pleased. I didn't think I'd pick that much up, to be honest, based on the other side. But I think the more leaves there are, the more it picks up because they're all clumped together. So you, as it hits one, it maybe picks three or four up. Whereas if there's only two or three sporadically placed on the lawn that I've found on the other side, 
it might miss it might miss them so that explains why there's quite a few picked up on this side So even though we only scarified it with the allet, with the other attachment, with the other allet attachment, still loads coming out. I just can never believe how much comes out, how much rubbish is still in there. You see all that slimy growth. As I always say, it's better in this uh, container than staying in the ground. So what I'm going to do now, because now we've got the majority of them up, it's looking half decent. Obviously these just get blown as and when I haven't got the time to pick all these up, Lloyd guy, my old friend, he does the garden at the back and all the weeding and everything, he'll come and pick these up but still trillions of leaves up there and then we've got that one up there which is yet to drop that much so panic stations will be setting in soon when I turn up on Wednesday and this lawn will just be covered again so this is an ongoing thing, I won't vertical every time I'll just get them with the hair to and pick the leaves up that way or if there's too many on, I'll give it a little blow first, I'll rake some of them up and then um, it's less work for the mower to do because even the hair, to as powerful as it is, can struggle when you've got loads of leaves and it, it fills the box up really quick, um, so you're forever emptying, so sometimes it's just quicker to get the old uh, tigger bin out. The £800 bin caused con some controversy with the price but I honestly, about 15, 16 years ago, I looked it up online and we couldn't believe it, they were 600 and odd quid plus that, which works out at around 800 quid, I think. But I have had it 23 years now, so what does that work out? Under 40 quid a year, so maybe they were looking long term in terms of if you spend 800 quid, you'll never have to buy another one. And I never bought it, but you can see my thought process. So let's have a look at this other side. So it looks. Yep, looking spot on, up close. You see the nice channels going through now. Get some airflow through there, been very wet. Not much sun around, so the orbit doing all it can to keep us going. And I think it's looking better than this time last year. That side, especially, is looking 10 times better. If I upload a photo now from a year ago, you'll see that it had lost control of it really, is that it was quite long and we'd done the renovations quite late and it was very lush, but because I'm still cutting that on number two, we've been able to keep that tightness and it's so firm on there. So we really um, made progress on this lawn this year and this one just looks the same to be honest. So I'll load a photo of this one from a year ago and you make your own mind up as to if it looks better or worse. But what I'll do is I'll get it cut and then it'll look even better and then we'll make a decision on have we improved it this year or have we gone backwards this year? Let's find out. So I've got the hair trout, as you can see, still set on number two there. Not been on this lawn onto this late in a season ever, even before we re-seeded it. I've never been on at two at this time. But that's just keep cutting it three times a week and you can continue to cut it at that shortness because you've never lost control of it. And definitely this year here, we've never lost control of it just because we've been on it all the time. So. Let's get this started and then let's get on with it. Now then, happens every time. I put the camera in this position and I just swing it across from the other side and it stops filming. So you've missed me cutting it with the rotary, so it looks pretty good I think. So just so I can show you some cutting on this side and it's held up better than I thought, especially down at this bottom end on my left. I'll get on it with the cylinder, so that's all set up, ready to go. So let's have a go and let's see what we can do. And we'll polish those tips up and let's see how good it looks after. So I've just cut that with the cylinder, started filming and something happened. Halloween maybe there's a ghost, it's pushing 
the stop button. But anyway, so that's had a cylinder cut. This has had a cylinder cut. I think it looks a lot better. Let's have a look up close. So you see we've kept that density because we've been cutting it really short all summer. We've been able to keep it nice and short. So if we have a look, we're all, well, the soil's right there. There's no lushness in that grass at all. It's really firm. And that's why you can't see your footprints after you've been on it. So I'm really pleased with this side. Let's go and have a look at this side. Let me show you this. This happened last year. It starts dying off and I just don't know why. I'm not sure what happened. It just started happening on the edge. It started over here last year. Just like that. But then this year, it's uh, going over here like that. I just wonder if that's the start of some leather jackets, perhaps just nibbling away at it underneath. It looks like something's stunting the growth. We'll have to keep our eye on that. And uh, if it doesn't recover, I mean, it looks like maybe so that looks like a tyre track, doesn't it? Well, that looks more like my vertical cutter, to be honest. Uh, so it's not like a tyre has been over it and damaged it or anything. So, yeah, or maybe it's just very wet. Again, just one of these anomalies, which, you know, I don't know the answer to. But, yeah, other than that, pleased with that side. This side went on it with the cylinder as well. Not as bad as I thought. It's a bit squashed down there. But we can't neglect the rest of the lawn just to protect that little bit which you can't even see. So I'll just cut it out like that, perfect. And somebody in the Facebook group did say, this lawn over here is looking really good, not too bad. And I said, when you see it up close, we'll see you retract your comment. Well, that's it up close. And I'll go in even closer. You see moss, weeds. So do you still think it looks decent? I won't name you, I know you are. But hopefully you'll uh, go in the group now and say, I retract my comment. Now you've seen it up close. So you see the difference between a well-maintained lawn and a not so much well-maintained lawn. Now then, that draws this garden to a close. Nothing else to do here other than keep my leaves off, keep up my products on, and we'll see how long we can stretch this off. There'll be regular updates on my Facebook group as always, so you can join that if you want. It's Daniel Hibbert, lawn expert, geek haven. Always welcome, and don't forget, exclusive codes on there for a product discount. One today, for example, Halloween special, 20% off all my winter goods so all you need to do is keep the leaves off your garden keep putting your products on but most importantly just keep those leaves off because they're the ones that do the damage at this time of year so until we do something else lawn related somewhere else that's it here for 2022 take care and we'll see you at my next job